Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the strategic analysis of the the Ukrainian uh, operation over at the Sviatove uh, Crimea front. Uh, basically, uh, Sviatove is here. Let me let me move. Choose the right. So, Sviatove is here and uh, Crimea is here. So currently the front line uh, stretches uh, all the way from the south of Dorishne, uh, all the way along the Zerubets River and um, all the way down to Yampil. So this is currently the front line. And uh, so we can actually follow through again. So, you know, it's a bit clearer this way. So the the Ukrainian forces are currently, you know, attacking uh, multiple locations. Uh, sorry in this direction pushing this way they're fighting for Kaislivka around here and uh they have some breakthroughs uh over here and um and this is a uh, Liman and uh, they are trying to push this direction so the ultimate objective currently is Sviatovay this is the ult ultimate objective uh, for this uh, current push and uh, the reason is because uh, this is a vital highway for the Russian side where they can actually you know, link up to Crimea and uh, reinforce Crimea over here and uh, as you can see uh, the border is actually a lot nearer from this direction and uh, if they are going to reinforce uh, from this side you can see that the, the road is a lot further than probably from the north but tentatively, you know, with all this fighting here, the, the northern route is also, you know, pretty uh, unsafe. Uh, but it's still usable at this moment, which is why the Ukrainians are looking to push, you know, push inwards and cut off whatever lines that is around here and uh, capture Sviatovay. And uh, in the meantime, they want to cut off this road this way, cut off this road so that uh, Crimea cannot be reinforced uh, or resupply from the north anymore and then uh, the Russians will have to go through uh, from uh, Starobits Starobits and uh, or they will have to go through from uh, Donetsk uh, several Donetsk upwards uh, through Nova Ida and uh, from Luhansk you know, going up so you know, currently you know, this looks like this in in the longer run, the so no the in the longer run the Ukrainians would want to take uh Staro builds and uh perhaps even this location which I cannot see uh below Vost. So these are the few you no know, long term objective the Ukrainians can aim for. The the problem with the Ukrainians uh, limitation is that they have they had not declared a war with Russia, so. As such, you know, they also do not want to give Russian, uh, the Russian side or Putin any good reasons to declare war, which is why, you know, all this Russian uh, territory is not exactly a good idea to to attack. Uh, currently, you know, they do hold the border, but uh, the Russians do, you know, sometimes uh, harass, you know, the Ukrainian forces in the border region, which is why, you know, uh, for the Ukrainians to push all the way to the border is only putting themselves uh, pretty much in danger. Uh, so no, I personally would not think that uh, it's ideal for the Ukrainians to push all the way to the border area for now. But rather, you know, you take all these uh, smaller areas and then you and do a defense line first. And then you cut off, cut off all these uh, lines, all these resupply lines take sterile builds then um, cut off all these lines cut off these lines and when you have this resupply route cancelled this the entire russian force here engage then the severs force can actually do a major push towards uh, several donets and lisishans and then recapture these two major ci twin cities around here the russians would have uh, no choice you know from the north this the entire northern part uh, they will not be able to cap control as long as they lose Sviatove, they lose Starobix, um this entire area is gone 
uh, is is basically you know undefendable unless they are going to launch a major offensive from the north southward uh, which is pretty difficult uh, given the fact that you know at Voroshne, they do have this advantage you know from the border but even so they did not really do much uh, given that uh, the border is actually this close and that there's a major highway here they did not even do that much over there so you know to to suggest that uh, they might actually go from the north uh, in an even more uh, rural area around here is probably much much more difficult so so the 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 key to you know doing this is that they have to break through the defense line and penetrate hard uh, like what they have done over in the East, uh, Balakvia region where uh, the Ukrainian forces broke through and then they actually you know head up to Varushya then then Shashenke towards to Kupians they go south this way and then the, the Russian forces have no choice but to retreat all the way you know out this is uh, so this this scenario is possible to do again it is possible but they have to break through the line very strongly break through and uh and then capture Sviatovay if they rush to Sviatovay but the problem is Sviatovay uh from my understanding there is uh, at least uh some uh, defenses already uh some entrenchment they are preparing for battles before the reinforcement was coming because uh, they wouldn't they weren't sure whether they can hold it hold the line here which is why you know there is a reinforcement coming to Sviatovay to hold the line and uh, they built uh, some entrenchment but given uh, the superior numbers of the Ukrainian forces they can actually bypass bypass and then just hit the rear and once you cut off the resupply and reinforcement or retreat route uh, the Russians will actually do a, ret uh, a, a general retreat uh, given that the Russians don't really like to be encircled uh, they will do a general retreat if you can actually do an encirclement so the the key to Ukrainian success uh, is actually to you know break all these supply lines because the weakness of the Russian forces is just they are willing to hold ground they are willing to fight to their death and uh, this this can be taken advantage of so by this same strategy, you can the Ukrainians can actually do it on Starobils as well. However, they do the Ukrainians do need to hold some def uh, defenses, uh, and then some DRGs, you know, penetrating and uh, doing ambush to ensure that the any Russian forces that try to you know uh, go sub go try to reinforce from the north here will be taken out. Uh, they will not be able to take to to you know actually help in the defenses. The only place that the Ukraine, uh, the Russians will be able to you know reinforce will probably from the south and from the uh, eastern side, which I think the Ukrainians still may not be able to you know uh, to encircle so easily. But you no, know, by taking out the northern part, you no, know, at least the front line will be you no know, become like this or become like this where. Uh, it is basically you know going back to you know the pre-war kind of front line uh, because i believe if i didn't remember wrongly sterobils was previously under ukrainian control in the beginning of the war so this is uh i think uh something that i will look to uh what the ukrainians are going to do uh the limitations are however is of course again like i said the lack of the declaration of war the ukrainians are unlikely uh to be able to enter or invade into russia to to really you know stop the russian uh, forces and uh and also doing that might trigger a declaration of war which means the russians will have uh internally politically uh able to you know mobilize even more troops which is not to the advantage of the ukrainian side the ukrainian is not going to get a military victory uh not so easily what the ukrainians are going to go for is a political victory political victory pretty much like how the north vietnamese defeated the the americans it is not a military victory it is a political victory the north vietnamese you know drag on the war for so long take uh take out so much uh russia uh the american troops you know causing so much you know uh 
handicapped soldiers, you know, so much uh, horrible footages to the point where the public support for the war uh, basically died out. And then this is basically what the Ukrainians uh, have to go for because uh, Ukrainians, Ukraine is ultimately fighting a much bigger country, a much more powerful country. And uh, the only way is to not allow Russia to have the political reason to go into a declaration of war so that you, uh, the Ukrainians can actually get a political victory. Uh, so, uh, however, no, the Ukrainians are stuck you know, in the middle because they do not really have the kind of uh, unconditional support from the West. And uh, the support have to come you know, with a better fuel success to convince the Western partners to take more pain, to, you know, to take more political uh, risk and cost um, to, in, to against the will of the people uh, on the ground, you know, because the civilians are struggling with the energy crisis, the inflation, and um, the Zelensky's job is really, you know, is to continue to keep on this support for uh, Ukrainian uh, war effort, despite, you know, the pain that the all these uh, NATO countries are suffering from so uh, it is important that ukrainians uh, ukrainian forces do not overdo it in all their in all their you know incursion or shelling into russian territory do not give russia uh, this uh, excuse you no know, to declare war and uh, as long as the russians cannot fully declare war uh, the political situation within russia will be difficult for putin to uh, mobilize more troops uh, without uh, good reasons of course we do have this conundrum that uh the luhans region currently the luhans region currently is uh under the russian law officially under russia is part of russia so uh the danger now is that the russian uh, federation can at any time declare war on ukraine to so-called liberate luhans or donetsk or Kherson or zaporizhia and uh, this is a very tricky situation for Ukraine, which is why uh, Russia was rushing for the annexation and um, because they are not winning the war. They need the more troops and uh, annexation is the only way they can get there to, to, you know, to even uh, initiate this partial mobilization. My personal belief is that Russia will still do at least two more rounds of partial mobilization to bring up the troops all the way to one million soldiers. And uh, from my understanding, the Ukrainians have already launched their own uh, mobilization already. I'm not sure it's the seventh or the ninth mobilization to you no know, counteract this increase in numbers of the Russian forces. Uh, so uh, hang on tight. Uh, if you are pro-Ukrainian, uh, it is the 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 win is not going to be a military victory. Mil military really is is going to be really really hard. The the victory it will be political and uh so that's why you know you need to watch the political realm the geopolitics and the relationship between uh, usa U eu and russia uh it's not going to be on the better ground the better ground the victories are important to continue to get the western powers to continue to support but the vict the win to you know to win this war to defeat russia is unlikely to be at a better field so anyway this is just uh, my analysis of the situation over here in the in the Luhans uh, Oskyu River region, uh, basically the, the Sviato Bay Crimea front. And uh, hopefully uh, you'll find this interesting and I'll see you in the next update.